Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here and welcome to the first Q&A of 2019. Now, you may notice or you may look back and see that I didn't do the monthly Q&A for December of last year or November. I think maybe like six of you noticed. But real talk, I wanna focus more on more meaningful videos this year in 2019. And I feel like at the end of those months, it started to feel kind of forced, like we would be doing a monthly Q&A, but there wasn't a whole lot more extra to talk about. So I'm leaning more this year towards doing more, more topical and more analytical videos instead of slipping those things into Q&As if people asked about it, if that makes sense. So with that being said, we are about to head out to CES, but I figured before we get on that plane, might as well ask what you wanted to know on Twitter. And these are some of your best questions. All right, so Shafiq uh, wanted to know why was the Mate 20 Pro on the table next to the iPhone in the most recent post on Instagram? So that top-down shot of what I'm bringing to CES was actually shot a couple weeks ago uh, as part of a collab with The Verge. So a lot of you guys may have seen that recent community post, but TheVerge.com, they've done this What's In My Bag series with a long history of really interesting guests and things like that. And they asked if I wanted to do one. I said, guys, I've already done one and a lot of them have seen that already. But if you wanna see what's in my video bag right before CES, that could be cool. So we shot that a couple weeks ago. It's on their channel. I'll link it below if you wanna watch it. Um, but at that time when we shot that, I was reviewing the Mate 20 Pro. So that's why it was in my bag. Now, as far as phones I'm currently using and bring the CES, this is the McLaren edition OnePlus 6T in all its shiny and glossy glory. Um, it's my current daily and I have the iPhone XS Max, of course, as my daily iPhone. Let you know I carry two. And I think that's what I'm gonna bring to CES. I'm kind of torn on, I wanna bring the Pixel because I know that's the best camera. That's the camera I can count on for taking the best shots. But I've been having some bugs with it again recently. I might make a whole video on that if it gets bad enough. But it was enough to get me to switch back to the OnePlus 6T every day. So I think that's what I'll end up with at CES. But uh, OnePlus 6T, McLaren edition, iPhone XS Max, Space Gray. All right, Anthony asks, what fitness and recovery tech are you using to train for Ultimate Frisbee? And honestly, my time playing Frisbee has actually usually been also my time away from tech, usually on the weekends, usually at nights when there's practices and things like that. That's my time to not have tech. Now, lately I've been wearing the Apple Watch a lot and getting into the whole competitions thing, which is a seven day long, who can get the most points and close their rings the most sort of competition. In order to not lose out on thousands of points, I've been wearing the Apple Watch while I play. So that's why sometimes I close my rings a hilarious amount of times in 24 hours. But other than that, I really don't use that much tech or, or fitness recovery related tech for Ultimate. That's my time away from it. Marius says, are you going to make an autofocus video on the Porsche Taycan, yeah, I hope to, yes. And like I've talked about competitors to Tesla before, but I think as far as direct competitors to Tesla Model S, especially the, the P100D that I love so much, the Porsche Mission E is I think what they're gonna call it, might be the closest competitor. As far as design, everyone loves Porsche interior and the superchargers they're working on. So yes, I do hope, if anyone from Porsche is watching this, I do hope to be able to actually get a chance to check out the Mission E and compare it against the Tesla. All right, Brianna asks, Will you start a podcast this year? And what will it be? A Brianna asks, will you? All right, Bri asks, will you start a podcast this year? And what would it be about? That might be referencing uh, one of my early year 2019 tweets, just sort of brainstorming that I should start a podcast. Ah, now this idea kind of stemmed from two things. One. I've been listening to a lot more podcasts lately, especially while driving. I've listened to so many hours of music usually, but I've been getting into podcasts. And two, there are just topics that you can only dive so deep into before a video gets excessively like in the weeds or too long. And there are things that I'd like to talk about more or get into and research and interview about more that could be an hour long that I can't really get into in a 10, 15 minute video. And it's actually funny, a lot of the videos have slowly, I don't know if you've noticed, but progressively gotten a little longer on average over like the last year or two. We kind of average now like 12 to 14 minutes, um, but that still doesn't quite cover how much we could talk about something. So I like the idea of a podcast, but I don't wanna just jump right directly in and rush it. Like I feel like I could just grab a mic and just talk for an hour and upload it right now and that's episode one but I wanna do it right. So I wanna sit back, we wanna get a good name, we wanna get a good scheme, a good format, and start to put things together. So I'll say we're gonna do 
something. We're going to do a podcast, but look out for that over the next couple weeks and months as we start to set that up. And we'll get you guys' feedback as we go along. You'll probably have ideas for how to make it better, just like the videos. All right, what would you want to see in the Tesla Model Y? It says 69 likes. That's funny. So the, the Model Y has been teased for probably some 2019 unveiling, and that would be the SUV that is the Model 3 of the SUV world. So I guess you could kind of expect a lot of things from the Model 3. You expect it to kind of look like a Tesla, but pretty minimal on the inside, geared for autonomous driving like the Model 3, uh, probably one screen in the middle, probably a lower price than the Model X. Those things are all pretty much expected. I honestly don't think we'll see that many surprises with Model Y. I mean, the, the design is the one thing we don't know what exactly it'll look like, but then past that, you know, it's an SUV. SUVs are very popular. I've been driving an Acura SUV, courtesy of Acura, thanks to them, since my car has been in the shop. And when you drive one, you notice there are a lot of other SUVs on the road, especially in America. So it makes sense. I kind of low-key think Model Y might be more important to Tesla than Model 3, just because of pure volume and just getting that, that size of the market. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be very similar to the Model 3 we all know. Matthew Waller just says, how many Roadsters though? I don't know exactly what he means by this, but I do have an interesting update to share. So if you remember way back at the beginning of 2018, I did a Q&A with Austin where we were talking, we were actually at Tesla HQ doing a video. And I mentioned that if enough people used my referral code uh, to buy it as some other Tesla, Model S, Model X, then I would get 2% off per person for a Tesla Roadster 2020. Well, in that last quarter of the year, as Tesla was breaking all their own records and shipping more cars than they ever have, a lot of people were ordering to try to get their tax rebates in. A lot of people use my referral code and now it currently sits at, it says 100%. Progress to Roadster, 100%. So that's pretty incredible. That basically means that enough of you, 55 of you, use the referral code to equal 100% off the Roadster, a, a free Roadster. But basically, there's still a lot we don't know about this program. Will everyone who's done this have to pay taxes, income taxes or capital gains tax on that Roadster, which is just a massive percentage of it? There's a lot of questions that still remain, but I, I just wanna say thanks to everyone who's used my referral code, who has actually gotten their car. I hope you love it in the past couple weeks and months um, because that's what's turned into 100% progress on this, this program. Hopefully it gets actually released on time. All right, how's your Tesla P100D? Surgery uh, on Apollo has been so far a success. I've been tweeting and sharing occasional updates on Twitter uh, and I'm sort of keeping a timeline as things go on. It's at a body shop, it's getting repaired, it's not totaled and it will be back. Now, if you remember the original photos, uh, the damage was obviously more than skin deep. So there's gonna have to be parts that are replaced. Uh, luckily the body shop that it's gone to, which is in New York has had most, if not all of the parts actually already in stock, which is incredible. So they, you know, they take the doors off, they take the sides off, they sort of inspect everything and they start to go through that process of replacing the parts that need to be fixed. They've already done the suspension, they've, they've done the doors, they're doing a lot of the cosmetic stuff now. They obviously have to rewrap the doors the same color that the car was wrapped, but they've made a lot of progress. So hopefully, maybe by the time I get back from CES, they'll be almost done. Uh, Concio says, you got hardened for MVP this year. Uh, I just want you guys to hear the, the drilling that starts up whenever I turn a microphone on. I just can't, I can't get a silent moment. So I just wanna let you just listen to this with me. All right, so Concio says you got hardened for MVP this year. Uh, I'm gonna go with yes. Can we see you wearing your glasses? Actually, Jeff, uh, so a lot of people don't know this, but from that what's in my bag video with the Verge, I had my contact lenses. A lot of people were like, whoa, you wear contacts? Do you have glasses? I actually don't own a pair of glasses anymore. I lost my original pair from high school that I did my first videos in. So if you want to see me in glasses, you have to go all the way back to those nine, 10 year old videos. But I actually since then have not bought another pair of glasses. I've worn contacts for like nine years and just stopped worrying about glasses. I also tweeted, I would like to probably get LASIK or something in the next couple of years, maybe to see 2020 by 2020. Why is this drilling so loud? It's ruining my 2020 puns. Bottom line, yes, you can see me in glasses, but it will be it will be nine year old footage. Actually, if you wanna see me in glasses, I'll link below again that commercial that I shot. If you wanna see me in glasses more recently, you can look back at that commercial I did with Under Armour and Steph Curry in 2018. Those were just like fake prop glasses for me to appear more as a nerd. They don't even have lenses for reflections, but that's what I would look like in glasses. Anyway, Knoopsy wants to know, what's one thing 
you don't want to see at CES 2019? And actually, the first response is a Bluetooth hair comb. And that's not that far off. I think maybe the best worst tech that I see on a regular basis, especially at CES, is the adding internet to things that don't need internet. Or just adding the word smart before something, like smart comb, you don't, or smart toothbrush. I don't need a smart toothbrush, but it definitely exists. I already know what I'm gonna see at CES. It's gonna be a lot of pixels. You know, all the TVs always show up. More 8K TVs than ever, probably. And there's probably gonna be a lot of AI, a lot of smart things. That's so loud. If I get far enough away from the microphone, they'll probably stop. Ready? <laughs> anyway. Anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's where I'm going to end it. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just going to cut it there. Cause I think that's all the time we're going to get between the drilling. Thank you for your questions on Twitter. Uh, hope to see you guys a lot at CES. I know there's a lot of people hanging out to Vegas in the next day or two. I'm about to get on a plane, about to drop this iMac in the bottom of the plane with me, and hopefully we'll get some good stuff out of the next couple days. Either way, hope your notifications are on so you get videos during the wave of stuff that goes through your sub box. Uh, that's about all I got to say. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.